Okay, where to start, Julian? <laughs> That's a good question. On my way here, I was like, I've never done anything like this. I don't feel like I have much interesting things to talk about. You think you don't, but you're actually an extremely interesting person because you are a f- basically full-time artist. You're a full-time like you f- shoot photos for a living. Yeah. You make photography for a living. Photography is art. True. You heard that here first. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. No one's uh, ever said that before. That's actually a whole thing in like art. You know like photography wasn't accepted in the art world until the almost 40s yeah we were discussing this last time we hung out because we were talking about how um will ai be considered art in the future or if ai would be considered photography yeah which uh led to a very lengthy conversation the dms back and forth between you and i when i was like dude we, let's just talk in person yeah so we can get we can get into ai in a little bit because i feel like that is a whole can of worms and i want to start with you i want to focus on like talking to you and like hearing about how so let's just start off easy how did you like get started in photography um like as a hobby or work-wise both um i've always really been interested in photography my grandfather was a photographer when i was you know uh young some of uh, my first like photos are these ridiculously like beautiful over the top family portraits. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, you know, he had a studio actually in Brooklyn. Uh, Cool. And then sadly, you know, had to shut it down. But um, so we went from these like beautiful photos uh, that are like iconic in our family to like, does anybody have photos of Julian around this age? (laughs) There was like somebody had a disposable at some point, I think. Um, But when I was in middle school um, for like, field trips or anything like that my mom would get me two things it was a disposable camera and a lunchables so i looked forward to you know these trips all the time but we would walk down jamaica avenue to a one hour photo and we would dispose the camera like get the, the everything exposed and and printed and i'd be like you know a little kid excited on christmas to get back the photos which yeah. were probably really crappy a lot of them just you know flash going off mm-hmm. now would probably hit on instagram yeah like <laughs> really really bright flash um but it was just something i looked forward to and always loved documenting uh and then in high school i was gifted a little point and shoot panasonic like lumix something mm-hmm. had one of those like crazy extendo 20x zoom you know whatever and i was using the sepia feature because that's you know yeah that was when you wanted to recreate film effects with a digital camera that was when that was cool that was the start of all of it um okay yeah so that got me into it and um then at what point did you figure out that like this could be how you make money uh not so much later i was doing that a lot for just fun i really wasn't into sports or anything i was like painting but wasn't really good at that Mm -hmm. i was drawing but really wasn't good at that not good at many sports but would just put headphones on and walk around wherever i was at and just take photos um and a few years later maybe when i was like 17 i started just doing like events uh just for like friends you know like parties and stuff like that. yeah yeah later on when i was like 20 or like 19 i got my first like dslr so at that point, you know, it was a Canon T3i. I was Hell yeah. Wiling out like, this is crazy. This is the future. This shoots <laughs> 1080, you know. Um, but I was just shooting like parties, uh, whatever parties I went to, friends parties, stuff like that. And ended up getting in contact with a DJ who was like a friend's dad. And he loved my photography. I was also dirt cheap at that point because, you know, mm-hmm. I was 20 and making like 13 an hour at Red Mango. And I was like, this pays more in one night than I do in like two days at Red Mango. Let's let's go. <laughs> so uh started doing a bunch of photography for events and through that got into weddings. But at that point, I was still like, I need a full time job, you know? Yeah. Just um, some supplement. Yeah. I just at that point, everybody in my life was like, photography is going to die down. Video is going to overtake it. Um, and no one's going to ever take a photo ever again. That was like around what year? Cause I was having similar conversations to that in college. Yeah. That was a like college time. That um, was like what? 2015, mm-hmm. 2000, 
like 15 16 yeah literally like as soon as people started seeing 4k Mm -hmm. like all the the all the people with their like fucking big brains were like everyone's just gonna shoot video now and pull stills and it's like yeah it hasn't happened yeah so in my mind i was always like well you know the time will come and you'll have to get a real job you're gonna have to be a big boy you know like do your thing um you're gonna have to clock in yeah uh so you know um i was really lucky that i started doing weddings and like anything that can pay the bills i was shooting everything like product photos of the most random products anything that gave me some sort of income um Mm -hmm. so that's where i started uh but it wasn't until like maybe freelancing three to four years that i really started honing in how many like job how many gigs would you say you would like average a year when you were like doing that like anything shooting anything and everything when I was still working at Red Mango and uh, I had like other jobs in between uh, me being full time freelance. But uh, at a certain point, a year, I mean, in a month, I was like stoked if I got like a job a week. Mm-hmm. And then it got to a point where like I learned the first December into January that things really slow down in the winter. Yeah. And I was like, man, I'm I'm done. Like, I don't know what to do. Uh and like I was doing a lot of conferences. I have a good friend of mine that does um a lot of big events and multi day conferences. And mm-hmm. he was just like, "Yo, we need a photographer. Come through." So he was doing video. I'm like surrounded by a lot of amazing video editors and filmers. Um, so I was like, "Hell yeah!" Like I get to hang out with a friend. We get to work together, and then afterwards, hang out and then work the next. Like this is the dream job, you know. <laughs> so um, yeah, stuff like that. I started picking up, and it was just. Um, around then that I really started honing in on like, all right, this, <laughs> this is my job. Everybody else looks at it as my job. I should probably start, you know, believing that myself. That was around what year again? Sorry. Um, I, I don't know. I'm trying to remember years now, maybe 2018, 19. So like four years after I was like really starting to freelance. Okay. So then like at that point, was it just like freelancing on top of full-time job and like taking whatever cash you can get and just like existing that way at first uh maybe like 2017 i was maybe 2016 late 2016 i was starting full-time okay um that was when you're like this is a business and like i am like well i was working a different job and around that time um this might have been like maybe 2016 um actually it wasn't far from here but uh they had budget cuts and they had to lay off most of the marketing department mm-hmm. and uh i was walking it was over on myrtle and i walked to a friend's house right around here and he was the first person to really tell me about freelancing i didn't tell him i just lost my job i just told uh-huh. my dad early yeah uh and, and he gave me this whole pitch about why freelancing is the future and um the whole time i'm like this is wild because i got to figure out how to make money now and not a lot of places are hiring and uh i got to figure something out here you know do you remember anything that he told you uh about like yeah about freelancing like what was the sh- what was the spiel that made you like have this like epiphany um the fact that you can take on more work when you wanted it mm-hmm. like obviously you know you need the clientele you need to find people to actually take you like hire you but but it was just like oh this is cool because i like working I, I don't like standing around doing nothing. Um, prior to this and even on the weekends and everything, like I was going from working to going home editing, uh, especially when I was working at like dead end jobs. I would go from working whatever job I had, go home, change, hop on the train, go to whatever party I was shooting, mm-hmm. come home uh, at like one in the morning, back up all the photos knock out wake up the next morning start editing and then head back to work and grinding like, you're yeah. just grinding for yeah like for for a really long time and, and it got to an unhealthy point you know which i think everybody starts realizing that it's not possible to do that forever yeah but um yeah like around that time when they laid like the most of the marketing department off i um i was just talking to him about like how there's so many different jobs that you can take and he's teaching me about like just reaching out to companies and these websites at that point, I feel like so many websites popped up out of nowhere where it was like, Oh, just sign up and, and you can get all the jobs your heart ever desires, the biggest <laughs> paying jobs, you know? Um, 
and it never really worked out those jobs but uh it gave me the time to start being around people Mm -hmm. which i thought was really important and i'm kind of revisiting now where it's like just building connections and relationships yeah um we're just hanging out (laughs) like (laughs) like this you know um just being around people who are creative and i was really lucky to have a lot of people who were older than me who were already working in industries Mm -hmm. um like creative industries kind of giving me guidance and like you know they 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 were like 10 steps ahead of me and like hey watch out there's a huge pothole here yeah and you could take the advice or just risk and go for it man but like i didn't have the money to to risk it so i would take a lot of people's advice and try to plan things out the right way and you know so what is planning something out the right way as a freelancer look like realistically i'm probably not the greatest to ask that when it comes to like the business end Mm -hmm. um because for a really long time my mindset was still you're going to get a full-time job you know um but it was like hey don't burn yourself out in the beginning of the year once work starts picking up Mm -hmm. start learning how the cycles work you know now post quarantine it's been a little different but you know for a while it was like I knew when my slow periods were going to come and that's when I would focus on personal projects. That's when I'd update my website. That's when I would, I have a list of all the people I want to just hang out with that are creative that I'm just like hanging out with these people. Give me life again, you know? Yeah, exactly. That's like like literally part of why I started doing this podcast. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, you're one of the people cause like you're just a walking art lesson. Like anything, any, any question I have about like art history, you have the knowledge just off the top of your head. That's that be average minus <laughs> and also just like a lot of reading. Yeah. But like that inspires me. I mean, the first time we really hung out here, I went home and I knew, I knew I was inspired when my drive home, which is like 20 minutes, I had no music on. <laughs> like just my thoughts were so loud. I got home and I went to like pause my music and I was like, nothing was playing. Oh shit. Sick. Yeah. So it's just, you know, being around people like that, I think really, uh, you know, is important. And, and like, if you think about it this way, you know, you kind of work in a marketing or creative aspect of your job, you know, Mm -hmm. you're surrounded by people, whether virtually or in person that give you feedback. (laughs) Yeah. But not about like creativity. It's like, yeah, it's a creative department, but like, it's all like business operations. It's like conversations. It's like, why do we pull this data? What does this term mean? (laughs) Yeah. And like, scheduling meetings to determine like what we just talked about in our last meeting yeah that's what i do like it's not rejuvenating it's like outside of like the skills and like learning how things connect and how like to most efficiently get from point a to point b Mm. like outside of that it's fucking just nine to five bullshit like office draining work jeez (laughs) <laughs> okay so maybe that's not the greatest example no like but but like in a traditional marketing department you have other creatives around and when you're working on a project together you have instant feedback yeah as a freelancer for about like three years i didn't realize like i didn't have that so i wouldn't you know beat a project try to work it like work it work it and then like get to a point where i think it's good but not have any feedback and just feel not as confident as i wanted to be in it yeah and um, around that time, I actually uh, started a Discord with a few friends who were all um, creatives working in different fields. And we just started sharing projects. And while like editing, we would just have a Discord group chat, like um, voice chat just going. Cool. Uh, and it was great. Like that was a, a real cool Does time that still period. still exist? Sadly, no. Um, Damn. I know. It got me through a rough time. But it was, it was really cool because like I could just share my screen and be like, all right, I'm having a problem with this. Like, what do you guys think? You know? And it was like back to that time of working with marketing teams and like us having that. Mm-hmm. So uh, a lot of times now, especially when slow periods happen or um, I'll, I'll schedule it in, like make it as important as a job that you have this time where you're connecting with people, uh, connecting with people who are like I consider better than me, you know, people I look up to. I mean, if you look through my Instagram DMs now, there's a lot of photographers who I admire who I still like reach out to him like hey can i like shadow you for a day yeah can i get you a cup of coffee i just want to pick your brain like you're really out there doing this and i really admire what you're doing can can i just learn something from you you know and a lot of times it's like i've had more yeses than have expected 
mm-hmm. and it's really cool you know hell yeah dude and like that's that's really interesting that you say that it's like i think a lot of people don't realize the power or like the ability of like cold calling cold emailing cold dming yeah. like i think it's like people are either like really nervous or like they don't know how to like say something in like the right way that doesn't like i don't know do you know what i'm getting at like yeah, yeah it's like people always tell you like or at least now like they say like don't just show up anymore like don't just oh yeah like they're like don't just show up like you have to like establish yourself first or you have to like do this first there's always a step first i think there's like different ways of going about it um you know i have my messages and emails i send for work Mm -hmm. but when it comes to someone i admire and just want to learn from i'm very upfront about it Mm -hmm. like um i messaged somebody recently they're an amazing food photographer uh like here in new york and up the hudson valley and i just reached out and i was like hey like i really love your photography um i feel like i've hit a wall with learning on my own i would love to pick your brain on how i can make like next steps and level up my my work to get to that quality uh that i feel like i'm not hitting yet and if you ever have any time you know i'd love to shadow you or assist you on a job and he responded like hey i have an assistant already i'll let you know if i need another one for any other jobs Mm -hmm. and i like immediately made it clear like hey i'm not gunning for the assistant job just wanted to see if i could help out uh not just stay in their shadow yeah but if you ever need anything you know let me know yeah you're like i'm willing to like come out for a day like work for you for free and then just like see how you operate you're like yeah i don't need like the job i just need to like see the setup and i don't want to take a job from somebody else mm-hmm. you know yeah. especially if you have like a well-oiled machine at that point like i would feel grimy just showing up taking some dude's job yeah. And like they're just trying to do the same thing I'm doing, you know? Mhm. How do you feel about like the whole notion of like people taking jobs away from each other or like people like not sharing information because they're scared of like losing their client or like something like that? I feel like that happens a lot, especially in like photography or like just really any freelancing gig in general. I feel like it happens a lot in the arts in general, mm-hmm. you know? Um I I hate it. I kind of, with whatever knowledge I have, I feel free like to give it because the only reason I got to where I am at is because I had people who were older than me, people in the industries that, you know, were self-sufficient, kind of taking grace and like taking time out of their day to teach me. Mm -hmm. So I always try to like give it back uh, in any sense that I can. Then Um, like what would be like the best piece of advice you can give someone right now uh regarding photography or like just freelancing and like business in general like starting it get like the best piece of advice you wish you had like two or three years ago oh wow that's a really good question um a few things one learn the business end Mm -hmm. like taxes health insurance all those things that you know (laughs) you don't think about as an artist yeah learn um I waited a little too late for a lot of that where I was just like, eh, I'll, I'll figure it out, you mm-hmm. know? Um, and also like my big thing now is think about it in the long run, you know, like think about your work. Cause I, I view my photography in two separate kind of entities or like lanes mm-hmm. where one is like work and then one is my hobby. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like, sometimes I have a job that they overlap and I'm stoked And then sometimes it's like, no, this is work today. You know, I have to go show up and I have to be on and do this. And I'm very blessed to still be able to use a camera and still take photos for a living. Um, But sometimes it's just sometimes work. And for me, like when I was just starting, I'm like, oh, I have to treat every job like this is my hobby. I have to take my sweet time with this. Mm -hmm. I have to make sure it's perfect. Yeah, it's perfect. It's precious. Yeah. And sometimes they're like, dude, you shot my party a week ago. Can I just get the photos? Yeah. You know, I'm like, well, the white balance isn't perfect. And it's like, well, it's also a party with a bunch of neon lights going on and no one's going to recognize it. We're going to post the whole thing on Facebook and then no one's going to remember this in a year. And then also like at the same time, it's like, how many hours are you putting into the project? Yeah. And then how many hours is that project worth after you put like how much per hour is that project worth after you put in all of that time? Yeah, exactly. 
and that's something I wish I learned too, like early on, because I was giving things like I was single. I, at that point when I first started freelancing, I was like a horrible night owl working till like three, four in the morning. And I was like, eh, it's fine. I'll just put on another episode of the office and I'll bang out this like another edit, you know, but it's like, that's not really healthy. So creating good, healthy, like boundaries early on really does help like structure your life. Cause like, what if I did just, you know, goof around today, not really edit till like one and then had a whole eight hours of editing. I would have not been able to make it today. And you would have been stressed and pissed. Yeah. And that affects like everything else down the line. Yeah. And like it, it affects people around you as well. You know, like if I, if you keep canceling on people, I literally got so self-conscious at one point. I was like, Julian doesn't want to talk to me. <laughs> oh no. I, I, I don't, I don't like being in front of cameras and I don't like talking about myself like this is fine i just feel a little uncomfortable that's okay i mean like is it the good uncomfortable or the bad uncomfortable well i guess good because you know it's something i don't like doing so kind (laughs) of pushing i don't know stepping out of your comfort zone yeah but your brain is valuable your experience is valuable yeah i guess so shut the fuck up. i'm also (laughs) the type of person that like binges podcasts on people talking about like themselves and this is Mm -hmm. I don't know. I guess but one of those. This isn't even like, you know, obviously this is about like your experience, but like, you're mm. not like, yeah. And so like I was at this fucking party <laughs> and you'll never guess who walked in and I got this sick photo of them and now yeah, I'm yeah. best friends with like <laughs> someone's, we're not doing that. No, that's not this. You're, like, no, you're right. You're right. You know, I feel like this is like a conversation we would have if you were to just come over and hang out anyway. Yeah. That's how I was viewing it. Um, And you know, that's how I wanted this to feel anyway. Cause like, I think, that's the most beneficial part to things like this Mm -hmm. because like going back to even just working like so many people now work either from home work alone like these are those types of conversations i think that are important that you're missing out when you work with people in person the like mundane moments of like us editing silently and just like so what have you been up to yeah you know dude busting my ass (laughs) yeah (laughs) barely making a home in the snow oh god it's crazy yeah but like going back to the question, what would I, what advice I'd give myself um, is I feel like not having to find a niche right away because mm-hmm. I feel like photography has changed so much that now it's like almost mandatory that you have to learn video mm-hmm. in some sense. Um, and that wasn't the case like five years ago. Yeah. Well, every camera is capable of like full video production at this yeah. point. Your phone is capable of... How crazy is that? Like, recording log. Like... Yeah, how crazy is that? That's cr- Of course it's fucking crazy. This this Sony A7C doesn't even do log recording. Like, that's like... Well, if it was an iPhone, you know. Oh, yeah. You know, if only I was shooting this podcast on an iPhone, then I'd only spend eight hours trying to upload it to Dropbox. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, um, great. And that... Yeah, love a CPU that's like the size of my fingernail, fingernail like yeah can't fucking do anything <laughs> yeah i think yeah that's funny i don't know man i i, I think uh that you know for me I, I really didn't figure out what i wanted to do i i i was just kind of doing photography and at a certain point it was making me money mm-hmm. and i only did photography when it made me money and yeah. it wasn't till quarantine hit that like at that point I had like gigs lined up for a few months out and that was like a big goal of mine, you know, that I wouldn't have to be like, all right, let's hope I have a job next week, you know? Um, so I had a lot of stuff lined up and it was getting really good. And then there were all events. Oh, all of them were events. <laughs> and you were up late again. Yeah. But then quarantine hit uh-huh. and all events went out the window. And, and then, so sorry to cut you off. No, there. you're good. But then like, did you have like, has that did that pivot your business at all after quarantine? Uh yeah, definitely cuz um I I wanted to stop shooting events. I work with this uh I was assisting this photographer who was like a, a beast. He uh is a wedding photographer, killer, like really good doing these crazy high-end weddings. Mm-hmm. I learned so much about lighting um cuz like on a wedding you have to like light food. You have to light people, you have to like crowds, you have to go from like flattering light for a group of 15 people to something a bit more elegant and looking like the cover of a magazine within 10 minutes. Yeah. Weddings are crazy. Yeah. So, uh, I like assisted him as long as I could. Uh, I started getting jobs on the days that he was asking and I was like, "Ah, I I need to take the job. But like, 
I really just, I, he was just a wealth of knowledge that I just kept learning from. But one day um, after quarantine, like events started popping up again. He asked me to assist him on one. And I was like, yeah, I think this might be like the last one I could do though. You know, I'm sorry. He's like, yeah, no worries. And like, we're driving back at like two in the morning. It's like ridiculous wedding in Jersey. Mm-hmm. And um, he was like, uh, in my you know glove compartment, can you pass me an Advil PM? We're like getting off of the highway. Uh, back towards where we parked and uh you know he takes that and he's like yeah i've been in this industry for like 30 years and my back is shot i have to take like advil before i get home so by the time i get home it kicks in i can unload the car back up all the photos and then finally like the sleepy part will kick in and i go to bed and i was like that's not that's not what i want no so um Around that time, I was doing, like, a lot of product photography for, you know, like, lifestyle, social media content. I was like, all right, well, sadly, some of the wedding companies and other companies I worked with aren't, like, didn't survive. Mm -hmm. So, let me take this opportunity where I have to look for work regardless and try to really put my my best foot forward when it comes to, like, web content. And, um, yeah, that's that's what I ended up doing. Um, I still did a bunch of events for the first year, like, 2020, 2021. But a lot of it was like I had to pivot and kind of figure out what I wanted to do. But a lot of it was also birthed out of like me not picking up a camera for two months, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, taking a break. Yeah, this one was forced, you know, quarantine hit. You got to take breaks, people. We take your break. Yeah, I talked about that with um, this girl Marie literally yesterday for the out there. If you're watching, that'll be like probably two weeks to a month ago, but. I was talking to her yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> it's sick how this works. The, the magic of podcasting. The, the magic of batch recording so that I'm three months ahead of my schedule. That's beautiful, though. Yeah. Well, it's fucking exhausting. I've done... This is my third one, like, in the last four days. In the last four days? Yeah. Jeez. I did Sunday. What's today? Tuesday? Yeah. I did Saturday, Monday, and today. <laughs> wow. And then I'm doing another one tomorrow. Who's tomorrow? This dude, uh, Matt Dunn in Australia. He's like a a photographer, publisher. uh, Just like connected to him because I posted like my YouTube channel on Mm -hmm. another Discord. And then he like started hitting me up. Dude, Discord's where it's at. Discord is where it's at. I want to build like a Discord community. Like, yeah. um, But obviously like I need a social following if I want to do that. (laughs) You just start it though. You started the podcast without a social following. True. Do so you, want, you would start the podcast, but not the Discord. Do you want to be in my Discord? Yes. All right. If anyone's uh, if you out check there, check the link below. Yeah. <laughs> uh, go click the Discord <laughs> link to join. Just the Discord that me and Dan are on. Yeah. Join our Discord. Um. Or if you're out there and I don't have the link in the bio, let me know if you want a link in the bio. Yeah. For slide a in the DMs real quick. Yeah. Slide in my DMs. They're open, but not for that kind of stuff. You freaks. <laughs> What were I'm we, so what sorry. Were we talking about? We're talking about you being a businessman. Um. Anyway, mm-hmm. back to the serious conversation. Yeah. I'm gonna keep all of that in. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Okay. 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 <laughs> um. Anyway. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Oh, we're talking about quarantine and me not picking up a camera for two months. Yeah. So anyway, um, how did, how have you approached increasing your prices over the years? Um, sometimes good, sometimes not. (laughs) What does that mean? Um, (laughs) like at first I was like, well, it's like, so New York's also a weird place because you, you can charge something in Manhattan, Brooklyn, and that's like acceptable. You go up the Hudson Valley, go upstate. That's not sometimes acceptable mm-hmm. for the same like amount of work. Sometimes you go out to Long Island and it doesn't work either. But um, for me, it was like trying to figure out how much I like. I stopped charging hourly. Uh huh. I try. I like try to charge by the project, by the package. Yeah. Nice. So I know kind of like, all right, this will take me about X amount of hours to shoot x amount of hours edit but i remember being on a job and like i got everything we needed within the first like three hours Mm -hmm. 
and they were like, all right, well, we budgeted for six. I'm like, well, what the hell am I going to do for the next three hours? Because I'm not leaving now. That's half the pay for today. So, you know, I'm like, all right, well, let's try this. And, you know, like, <laughs> and, and then I, you're I pulling shit out of that. your ass. Dude, you're, I hated that You're feeling. shooting way much more than you need to. Yeah. And then you're over delivering yeah. and not getting paid as much. Yeah. So from that point on, I was like, all right. Uh, I have a, a, a friend named Rob that is like a graphic designer. He owns um, a marketing company out in Jersey. Really sick dude. Um, very early on, he was a sounding board of like, <laughs> I could call him at any point. Like, hey, how do I handle this? Yeah. And he was like, m- you know, this is me going back to what I was saying earlier about like having people in the industry that, you know, took time out of their day to talk to me. Like he shouldn't have. You know, but he really didn't, and he's still, you know, a, a great friend of mine. But um, he was something like, "Well, you're swamped. You're trying not to double book. Just raise your prices." Literally, I I was gonna say the same thing. Yeah. So double your prices. Yeah. So I didn't double it. I, I increased my prices the first time, and then I lost a bunch of work, and I was like, "Oh my god, beautiful. What am I gonna do?" Yeah, but if you lose a bunch of work, or like if you, that's why I always say double, because then like. Let's say you double your prices and you lose half of your work. You're still back where you were. You're still back where you were. Same yeah. amount of money, half the work. Yeah. I guess in the moment it was also scary because like, I'm like, well, what am I supposed to do? You know, now I got to look for work again and we just got comfortable. Yeah. But then you get the opportunity to find better clients. Yeah. that I mean, in hindsight, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, But in the moment when you're looking at like. Yeah. Your bills. Yeah. Bills don't stop. Bills and, don't uh, stop. And life keeps going. So, I mean, I eventually, you know, you figure it out. And now I kind of increase my prices every year. Um, and then, like, I I kind of, like, charge prices based on the project. Yeah. Some projects require a lot. Some projects are for bigger companies that more eyes will see. Mm-hmm. Uh, learning licensing. I'm still not great at that, but I've been, like, learning a bunch about that. Licensing is a tricky game. Yeah. It's a lot of, like little rules little stipulations like Mm -hmm. faces versus hands versus like anything else yeah or like who owns the images Mm -hmm. so like one company i work with um i've been working with them for a while but they'll reach out and be like hey um they get all the photos that i edit for social Mm -hmm. but every once in a while they want to do like uh get featured in a magazine Mm -hmm. or do like a print ad yeah. And they'll reach out like, hey, we'd like to license these images. And we have like a going rate already. Uh huh. So I just send them an invoice and then they get the high res images and, you know, whatever. Yeah. But like if I would have known that early on, the amount of times I was delivering like 300 images and they're I'm like, yeah, just they're yours. Mm-hmm. Like you hired me. So they're your photos now. You no. know, Because that's not how that works. Full rights. Double. Yeah. Easily. And then like not being afraid of losing clients. Because, like, for me early on, it was a lot of me working for friends. I feel like it's always, like, you start and then you have your immediate circle around you that are hiring you either out of pity or all of a sudden they're like, hey, I decided to start a clothing brand. Yeah. Sure, let me hire you. Yeah, I love all those, like, quick turnaround clothing yeah, brands. Yeah, yeah. You know, I just started this and I'm, I'm doing it out of my bedroom. Can you just, you know, can I pay you 50 bucks and we see what happens? But um, from there, you know, you, you branch out. You start advertising networking showing people what else you've done and um mm-hmm. that's where i suggest like you start increasing your prices and, and and you learned at that point like all right now i'm comfortable now like now now it's time to get uncomfortable yeah or like now i feel like i can be hired yeah because early on man like the first wedding i photographed uh like i i never want to share those photos Dude, again i shot a wedding in college for 700 dollars. jeez it was me. Oh, we did it for fourteen hundred, but I did it with another guy. We yeah. both shot and like s- split it. Like it was just how crazy, fucked up. We f- like I feel so bad for those people. <laughs> <laughs> Why were the photos not great? No, not at all. <laughs> um, I was in college still. I hadn't even graduated my photography degree. Oh wow. Um. Anyway. Yes. You charge by the package now. Yeah, for most most jobs, sometimes it is just like, you know, I, I take each job by the way it comes, you know? Yeah. What is like a standard package, you would say? Uh, For what? Mm, 
your like your average like your most average shoot that you can that you do uh all right like right now i've been doing a lot for um different like i'm trying to think how do i word this i just did a let's say coffee shoot you know Mm -hmm. social media content for a coffee company okay um i always start off with what's your budget Uh uh-huh and that's always been like something that that's key a lot of people don't do that yeah i I think it scares a lot of people away um but i started wording it this way where like i can get this done within different budget and different ranges Mm -hmm. it just depends on what we do Mm -hmm. you know i can ask you hey dan can you pick me up on you know and drive me here like sure i could pick you up in my you know like 2001 toyota avalon mm-hmm. or i could pick you up in a lambo mm-hmm. just depending on how much you want to pay yeah we're still getting to the destination it just depends on how we get there yeah so um when it came to like asking a budget it's like all right well i could hire an assistant i could hire an lighting assistant i can hire you know a second photographer to help me uh i could shoot tethered into a computer and now we could preview it it'll be a longer day a little slower or are we just trying to get through this and just get some stuff for social, you mm-hmm. know? So that kind of dictates how you're going to get the day done. And it, it kind of goes back on a budget. If they're like, hey, our, my budget's 600 bucks. Like, what can we do with that? That's when I would dictate like, all right, well, we could do this, this, that, and the other, mm-hmm. you know? Or I'd be like, hey, what's your budget? And what are you guys trying to get done? Okay. So for the $600 budget on the social media content shoot, yeah. like how many deliverables are we talking? Uh, I try to break it up by scene. Mm-hmm. I really try and, you know, like, let's say we're doing a $600 thing. Okay. Um, that's not like really certain price points anymore, uh-huh. but like at a certain point, that's where, you know, like that's, that was a package I had. So let's say it was a $600 package. And I would be like, all right, let's say we have a few new products. Um, I'd set up lighting and I would give them like two scenes and let's say like three hours or two hours, you know, and each hour it would be like, these are all the photos we need to get delivered. So if they're like, we have, you know, a few bags of coffee that we need photographed. We want to push our new mug. And then we want to push, um, you know, like lifestyle photos. Maybe mm-hmm. somebody pouring coffee or uh, pour over, pouring a latte shot. A lot of pouring. Yeah. Um, People love seeing coffee pours. Yeah, apparently. Um, but it's like, yeah, that that's just, that would be like different scenes that we'd figure out. So... Um, I would break it up like, all right, well, we'll have like three images of the process of making a pour over, you know, and then two photos of each bag, horizontal and vertical. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I would work from there. So it kind of depends on the project because I can't approach uh, like a real estate listing the same way, you know, there I'm stitching three HDR images together, maybe more depending on the lighting. And I can't be like, all right, well, for this one scene, I'm going to get you six images. It's like, that's a lot of editing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, batch editing, um, if you have the lighting the same, keep your settings roughly similar and just kind of sync that across in Lightroom. That's a lot quicker of a turnaround time or a lot less editing time. And you can get a similar look across the board. Mm -hmm. So what is like your standard real estate package look like for you? Um, For me... Um, I kind of base it on the house, the size, the rooms. Um, I was working in Manhattan for a while working with a company and we based it off of how many rooms were in okay. each house. Cause like you could go into a tiny like apartment and it'd be three rooms and I still got to get like, you know, a wide of one s- from one side, a wide from another side. Mm-hmm. If there's anything important in the room, like, Oh, this one has a washer and dryer. We got to get a photo of that. Uh, and then we got to get like a detail of each room. So I would base it off of that. And then like the living room, you get a few different ones depending on the square footage of the house. You know, you may need more uh, photos. Um, and then that's all dictated by the price. So it's like, all right, well, you know, this house is one bedroom or this apartment's one bedroom. And uh, this one of the companies I worked with, we kind of had a flat rate. So when they listed the house, they kind of already knew their budget of how much they had to invest to advertise it. Uh, and that that worked out great for a while um and then you know housing market is kind of crazy right now so <laughs> didn't and work out anymore airbnb market in new york is kind of dude how wild is that gone yeah it's crazy yeah i worked with the airbnb company for a while too um and i was trying to get out because it was just like i felt a little bad because 
you ever go to airbnb and like you sit on the couch and you're like this is definitely like 50 bucks on amazon mm-hmm. that was like everyone we did shit and i just felt i just didn't feel great <laughs> about like photographing these things and trying to make them look as pristine as possible and i'm like dude i moved that couch and like the leg fell off you know so <laughs> but that kind of went back to me like all right well this is my job now I gotta, you know, put put my head down and work for a second. Mm-hmm. Snap those pics. Yeah, I <laughs> that's just gonna be my my tagline on my <laughs> on my it's website. Your, yeah, it's your new new sh- uh, shirt. Snap those pics. Snap those pics. Um, yeah, but like, when it comes to to the hobby side of photography, I think that's important. Uh, cause like, I have so many friends that I started photography with, or we like all started at the same time. Um, and we're all doing like photo or video and so many of them, it's now just their job. They clock out at the end of the day. They don't touch their camera. Yeah. And like for me, it's just, (laughs) it's an obsession. It's, it's my hobby as well, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so it's like, cool. We're on a shoot, shoot wraps. What are you up to after this? Like, I'm going to go home. Do you want to go like at sunset? We can go catch photos over there. It's like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm done. It's like I'm I'm done for work for the day. I'm going home. And that for a real long time didn't compute in my head. I'm like, well, like we have an opportunity to get really cool stuff. Why not? Yeah. (laughs) And I started learning like most people didn't think that way. And, you know, it was real hard. Like I had to start finding friends and people that did think that way. Um, And that's kind of going back to what I was saying earlier, just like being around people like that. Um, People who still have that drive even after work when they checked out. It's like cool like let's get something else done like you doing three podcasts three days in a row for tomorrow like after work you know but but i think that's important man like i think as like you can't really lose a love of what you're doing that's like musicians you know Mm -hmm. if if you see like it happens all the time in musicians you see like someone that gets big and like they sell out yeah or they just hate their audience yeah oh my god that's <laughs> that does make for really good content and like things to consume <laughs> it's very entertaining but like as an artist that sucks dude you know like can you imagine if paul mccartney hated his job i'm sure he does you think so dude no i mean he's fucking been rich since like before true. the cell phone was invented true like i think mac demarco is a great example of someone who blew up and then was just like, yo, screw it. I'm going to do whatever the hell I want. If nobody likes my music, nobody likes my music. And he's very vocal about like, I am lucky. I, I made enough money that I can live off of my money. And now I'm going to just take this opportunity to just do what I want. Mm-hmm. Like I want to, you know, he just did a weird album where he just drove across the U.S. and recorded in, in all the states that he stopped in. Didn't get much praise, but like he did it. And as an artist, I feel like that's the the most like gratifying thing where you complete a project that you've wanted to. Yes. <laughs> that was, <laughs> no, that was a good monologue. <laughs> oh, I, I think, but that's important, you know? And I, I try to tell people all the time, like don't lose your love or, or, or don't lose your why. Yeah. Don't, don't just turn it into a job and then clock out. Like, yeah. Otherwise like just get another job. Yeah. I could probably get jobs that pay a lot more. And, like, just still keep my hobby as my hobby. It's not fun. No. I mean, no. I mean, like, having a job sucks, dude. Uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of how life works. But, like, you, I, I remember um, early on when I was first, like, freelancing and then still working kind of, like, dead-end jobs and just stuff to kind of, su- like, subs not substitute like help out with whatever payment i had subsidize subsidize there we go um a friend of mine was like uh he told me i'm trying to remember i want to word it well he was saying like when you're working that really crappy job and for me it was like washing dishes somewhere like Mm -hmm. i'm standing there washing dishes headphones on and like dishes just keep coming in like your brain wonders and you like wish you were doing something else Mm -hmm. what is that other thing Cause that's what you're really passionate about when you're doing something else and you're forced into this place, you're dreaming about something else. What is that? When I was landscaping, I was debating like Marxism and like politics in my head. <laughs> Were you really? That's the most you thing possible. <laughs> I would be like leaf blowing and getting into like 
fictional arguments with myself about like policy. Oh my gosh. And then like, how does that translate into like the images we consume? (laughs) I love that though. But it's like, it's different for everybody. You know, for me, like at that point, I really wanted to just like, I just wanted to take photos of places I would go. Cause like for me, Growing up, we never really went places. Mm-hmm. So, like, one of my favorite things now is um, my grandma moved back to Puerto Rico like eight, nine years ago. So, I don't get to see her as often. But whenever she visits or whenever I visit her, um, I we just spend, like, an hour or two just scrolling through, like, on, you know, I'll cast on the TV the place I've been recently. Mm-hmm. Or I'll print out a bunch of photos and mail them to her. And she'll call me, like, oh, my gosh, you know, all excited. But it's, like... We growing up, we didn't have those opportunities to go see these places, and now I'm really lucky to, you know, I don't travel a ton, but I get to mm-hmm. travel, and like, I like to document what I see, and it's like, such an exciting thing to come back to my family and be like, and then look at this place, you know, so that's like kind of goes back to a, a large portion of my why, and why I keep taking photos even when it's like, you know, not work. I can't think of a better way to end the podcast than with that. Yeah. Because we're right at time. It's 47 been, minutes. It's been 47 minutes already. I know. We could probably talk for like another 47 hours. We can, but it doesn't have to be recorded anymore. True. We'll just put the mics down and just keep talking. How are you feeling? You feeling good about it? Yeah. Uh, I feel like I rambled, but you know. This is perfect. This is literally like you, you were natural at this, even though you're like self-conscious about it it was pretty nervous are you uh how do you feel about it amazing yeah yeah well then i'm happy then we're good all right now you got to do uh promotions promotions look at the camera and tell people where to find you um on the instagrams at julian bracero um (laughs) my website's julian just search (laughs) julian bracero and you'll you'll find me that's that's really it um probably posting about some coffee or wherever i've been so you know go check that out hell yeah cool thanks julian yeah no worries man